If you've heard of learning by immersion before, then you most likely heard it in the context of learning languages. And that's for a good reason. Learning languages by immersion can be one of the most powerful methods for reaching very high levels of language proficiency in a surprisingly short amount of time. When it comes to learning Japanese, a popular example of this is AJET, aka All Japanese All the Time, as well as the Mass Immersion Approach, or MIA. And just by looking at those names, you can already probably tell what they might contain. Of course, what brand the method is called doesn't matter, as at the end of the day, what matters are the immersion-based learning methodologies. Essentially what the immersion boils down to is getting a ridiculous amount of input in a given language. Even when doing things such as washing the dishes or commuting, you can still read and wear headphones to constantly listen to native audio. This way, you're eventually going to rack up thousands of hours of input in the language and most likely making massive progress because of it. And as you can tell, you don't even need to be in the country which speaks your target language in order to immerse in it. There has been plenty of evidence which suggests that immersion, or getting thousands of hours of consistent input, works for learning languages. But what about subjects and fields outside of language learning? I was curious to know the answer to this, until I realized that I've already basically done that. Somewhere in June of 2017, I found the rising field of machine learning quite interesting, especially the branch called Deep Learning. So I decided that I'm going to self-learn it, and sure enough, by the end of the year, I landed an internship at a company which was looking for a Python slash machine learning developer without me even having any previous work experience in such a field. Now of course it wasn't as technically demanding as a top tier data science job in Silicon Valley, but I felt quite comfortable with my skill set on the job, which I kept improving and refining during my free time. Learning machine learning wasn't as straightforward as learning a specific activity such as Python, which I also had to do in the process, but rather I had to grow an understanding of the field of machine learning, meaning that on top of the practical skills, I needed knowledge of the field to best understand how to apply a given subset of machine learning to what problem. And as the video has foreshadowed, the way I learned machine learning was something akin to immersion-based learning. Of course, it's not quite the same as learning a language, but I noticed that there's quite a big overlap. Well, first I started out by following some random machine learning tutorials on YouTube, after which I started doing some research about how to learn machine learning and if it has any prerequisites. And soon enough, I started doing online courses on probability and statistics. From there, I went on with actual machine learning courses, such as the original machine learning course by Andrew Wang, and later the deeplearning.ai course, which was released with the perfect timing. Long story short, I did a bunch of online courses and a lot of practical experimentation. So how is this related to immersion at all? Well, when I wasn't doing courses, I was very often immersing myself in the field of deep learning. For example, when I was eating, playing games, walking or commuting, I was very often watching or listening to conferences, tutorials, podcasts, talks and so on. I also read some books, blogs and research papers. I was also often browsing forums and subreddits. I even made my Twitter account the source of machine learning discussion and news. All these things combined gave me a much wider grasp of the field compared to if I had just learned one particular practical skill set. I had a broad intuition of how to approach various problems. I also knew who are the experts in the field and what to expect of AI in the near and distant future, and what are the societal and existential implications which they might have, and what can we do to ensure AI safety. Combining all that, with also doing a lot of practical experimentation in my own projects, gave me not only a practical skill set, but also made me see the big picture of AI. Also, to give some examples of the projects I made, I made an image detection CSGO trigger bot to predict when the crosshair is on the enemy. <clears throat> For educational purposes. I also tried making an Osu map generator, but uh... Anyway, back then, I wasn't thinking of my learning methods as immersion. In fact, I didn't think anything of them. I was just winging it without any sort of study schedule or anything. Which is why, I think if I had been a bit more organized, I could have benefited even more from such methods. If I ever were to learn anything like that again, here are some of the things I'd consider experimenting with. 
For complex topics, try listening or reading to the same material over and over again, until you can intuitively recall the concepts covered. For facts which are hard to remember, I try using space repetition software such as Anki. Consistency is absolutely key for the long term, which is why I try learning something every single day, even if it's something simple like listening to a podcast, because this is habit forming, and once you have a habit of doing something, the discipline you will need to do it will decrease significantly. This can also help create a stimulating environment, as if you were surrounded by other like-minded productive people, even if in real life you're currently in an unstimulating environment. Now of course, there are some downsides to this method as well, such as it taking up quite a lot of time and effort. And another potential issue I can see with this technique is people experiencing burnout. I've experienced burnout. Now it wasn't directly because of this learning technique, but rather a lot of things combined. Omitting everything that was going on in my life at the time, one of the issues was that I was feeling guilty over every second of wasted time. When I played a video game, I always felt cognitive dissonance, as I wasn't sure whether or not I actually needed a break or if I was just making excuses, which in turn made it into an even bigger waste of time, as I was having too much dissonance to properly enjoy the experience, much less get the actual rest from it. The same thing applied to everything, including watching shows to even spending time with loved ones, until I experienced proper burnout, which was a big factor in me literally quitting my job, and I pretty much needed months to completely recover from it. Don't think of resting and work as separate entities, resting is work. Well anyway, it took me quite a long time to find the balance between true rest and using oh, I need to rest as an excuse to procrastinate. But now, I can say that you shouldn't experience burnout unless you're not allowing yourself to recover. I might tell the full story of this in the future, so if you're interested in that, you can subscribe to know when it goes live. To sum it up, what I'd call immersion based learning would be doing classical or direct study as usual, getting lots of practice through experimentation in your own projects, listening, reading and watching content related to the field both actively and passively to rack up hundreds if not even thousands of hours of input, and of course, to keep the consistency and the immersion going, learning every single day if possible. I wonder if any of you have already done something similar. If so, or if you have any other thoughts about the video, you can let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. See you next time.